something funny has been happening at Air Miner's launch pad this second batch. So just like the first batch, we're working with teams on customer discovery, we're helping them talk about goals and set up hypotheses, understand their value proposition. But the funny thing is happening is Jason and I are, are taking the tools that we're working with teams on, and we're starting to apply them to Air Miners itself. So we're taking a look at some of the goals that we're setting and thinking about, is that actually gonna get us there? Is this, is this goal, are we aiming in the right direction? So there's two goals that come to mind for me and I wanna pull those apart, uh, starting to think about, you know, a thousand shots on goal. How, how can we make that a better goal? How can we make that clear that we're making progress on it? How do we know when we've ultimately arrived? Same thing with getting to gigaton scale carbon removal. Who's keeping track? Are we there yet? Some of the challenges with a thousand shots on goal, for example, is, well, first off, what's a shot on goal? Is it is it somebody who has an idea about carbon removal? Some, some idea about a solution? Uh, that seems really broad. And, and even if we did have a thousand people with ideas for carbon removal solutions, that wouldn't necessarily get us where we need to go. On the other hand, what if we uh, define a thousand shots on goal and a, a shot can only be a company that goes through Airminer's launchpad? Well, that might work, but it seems really, it seems like it might be too narrow. Um, if it's just those companies that go through launchpad, maybe that also doesn't get us to, to where we need to be. So working through that, wondering about that, this idea of gigaton scale carbon removal that also comes up because it's like, well, who's who's keeping track? Do you know how much carbon dioxide was removed from the air last year? I don't know. Uh, and it's important to be able to measure these things, to be able to track these things if we're going to get anywhere. It's, it's you know, if, if you don't track goals, it can be too easy a year, five years, 10 years down the road to start to understand the effect that something is having and say, oh, wait, actually, this is totally different uh, than, we, than we thought it did. This didn't have the uh, the intent that didn't have the effect that, that we wanted. Uh, we actually had one team from Launchpad that, that discovered exactly this. Uh, this woman entrepreneur was going through uh, her technology, going understanding how it, how it worked, understanding how it might map out to get to net negative. Uh, and you know what? She discovered that it, it wouldn't get there. It wouldn't be net negative after all. And so she's back to the drawing board, working on figuring it out. Uh, but that's that's what can be uncomfortable about, about uh, diving into these goals and, and diving into like, okay, is this actually having the effect that, that it, it will? Uh, or is this actually having the effect that we want? The challenge for this entrepreneur is, you know, this might be a good business, but it's not actually net carbon negative. And so understanding, you know, what you want, maybe, you know, maybe you're just happy with it being a good business. Totally fine. Go for it. But if you do really want your business to be carbon negative, you want to know as soon as possible if it's off track or if it's not going to get you there. And again, that's where that's where this kind of work can be uncomfortable because shoot, maybe it means you go back to the drawing board. But it's really important if we're ever going to get to gigaton scale carbon removal. The other thing that's important about goals in carbon removal is tracking actual carbon removed. One of the challenges is we can't just use the Keeling curve to track carbon removed. The Keeling curve tracks uh, overall levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere every year since 1958, but we can't just go up to Mauna Loa and measure how much carbon was actually removed. That's because we're adding so much carbon dioxide every year to the atmosphere that it would be really hard to, to, to measure a difference even if we were removing a billion tons of carbon dioxide. That's because we're adding 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere every single year. So even if we've got a gigaton scale magical carbon removal system today, it'd be really hard to tell, if not impossible, to tell that that's working through the Keeling curve. So ultimately we need new tools to measure, report, and verify carbon removal. Uh, and this is actually a specific category that the new uh, XPRIZE carbon removal uh, has set aside funding and, and prize money uh, for teams that are working on uh, what's called MRV. So if you're interested in that, that area, if you're working on that area, definitely go, go check that out. Uh, but we need those indicators to be able to track progress towards gigaton scale carbon removal. It's been great working with 
Air Miner's launchpad teams on these goals, on value propositions, on setting a hypothesis, and then going out and testing it. And it's been great to apply some of these lessons back to Air Miners itself. What's a shot on goal? How do we measure gigaton scale carbon removal? And so much of this too is coming from the discussion last week about how do we know when we're there? What is what is a picture of uh, this future look like and, and what part of it are you gonna build? I really appreciate the responses I saw uh, on, on Slack and boot up Slack uh, talking about uh, what these folks saw as the future of carbon removal and how they were gonna be a part of it. Uh, setting goals, defining goals, being able to measure progress is key to that uh, for everybody. So I, I look forward to uh, diving more into this and I look forward to hearing from other people who are working to set their own goals in carbon removal.